welcome to our show today karan and roshan so excited to have you guys on the show you're going to be dealing with my husband 25 years we've been married i, I can't even believe it finance professional my daughter zoya who is a junior in college my son veer who is a sixth grader in middle school and our guests of honor today karan soni and roshan sethi uh, let me I, where to begin so roshan you're a doctor you're a director you've created tv series you've done so much and now you're with karan who is an actor basically <laughs> right Uh, and Karan, tell us a little bit about your journey. You know how you got here, your school, your how you got into the business. Yeah, yeah I know. I I think like you've been very, uh, you've said it in a very politically correct way. But yeah, Roshan went to two Ivy Leagues. You know, he went to Yale, he went to Harvard Medical School, and I went to USC. Um, so. You know, not as prestigious, but the irony is that I make seven times more than him. Um, <laughs> I would say my tax, the, my tax bill for the year is three times what his total salary is. It really is. So, oh my god! Um, you know, so I don't know. Every now and then I wander over to his computer and I take a look at his bank account and I'm like, wow, like all this schooling later, eight years, nine years, ten years. <laughs> Karen yeah. coming in for the kill how oh my god now every brown boy out there is going to be like see we know it can be done you you know every boy who's out there getting yelled at for not going to medical school you know what's going to happen are you going to become the poster child for them cuz 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 you know they see parents it was never about saving lives for us right. you know that no, no. it was no. it was all about like how are you going to make the most money yeah and here yeah. we have The four hundred one k, the the yeah. whatever the other things, and the apartment. So who oh, am I? Am I allowed to ask who owns this apartment that you're in? Um, I own it. Um, I own it. Um, I bought I it at the right age of twenty four. <laughs> from being on a TV yeah. show, I don't pay so rent. I don't pay utilities. I don't consistently help with the trash or any of the chores. I just live here for free, for oh, literally wow. for free. Yeah. I just oh, don't want to keep like love. focusing on looking pretty, you know, because that's the other <laughs> main value that he's adding. So. Uh, yeah. Listen, I do appreciate that because Karan, you're a serious artist, and you do need a muse. You do. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> You do. So, so there is a job there, and and you know what better muse than this beautiful, brilliant, tall, skinny Harvard, <laughs> Yale, uh, best, <laughs> best, best, best teacher. I mean, yeah. listen, you know the funniest thing is that when I met Roshan's mom f- uh, uh, during a movie shoot, yeah. she like she you know she listed it all, uh-huh. and I would too. Yeah, I would yes. too. I go anywhere. I'm like my daughter has written a book in Latin. She's yeah. she's at Stanford. Even wow. though Stanford, like we're not gonna talk about sh- how yeah. trashy it's becoming with time. But <laughs> but like I I go through too. My son the same. My little one the same. So I understand it. But I think we captured the moment as a backup. Is Ryan Reynolds really as nice? No, he is. He's really nice. The only thing that's intimidating about him is that he's so fast. That um, for me personally, I mean. Sarna wouldn't have this problem, but I couldn't keep up. <laughs> <laughs> And does he really love his wife feel... as much as he shows? Yeah, I think he does. Can you believe it? Why is there not a love? Why is there not a love? I don't believe how, I don't how in love that couple comes across. How into each other? I know. I know. No, it definitely looks you know? PR inspired. It okay. looks a little. Oh <laughs> okay. <laughs> Yeah. You're yeah. such a skeptic, mom. People are actually in love in this world. Like no. I know that's such a crazy concept. No. Bro, they're in love. Look, we have a We're happy couple. Are you, are you really talking about love. your mom and me or Karen and Rob oh and Roshan? <laughs> oh, I'm definitely not oh, talking about. Shut up, please. Yeah. Oh my god. Oh my god. I have a I have a question for Roshan. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, my mom said your mom makes you pursue medical school. Is that actually true? <laughs> no, work now as a doctor. Like my mom she makes you like, pursue it. My mom's well the reason directing. I'm a doctor, interestingly, because when I was young, she took me to her clinic, and I shadowed. My brother and I used to sit at the very front at the front desk, and we used to, at the age of ten or eleven, like younger than you are now, we used to greet patients as they came in. And uh, we'd get the chart. One of us would get the chart. The other would take them back to the clinic room. We'd do vitals. We'd do initial questions. 
and we were so young. We were probably below child labor laws or whatever, but we were really like at a very early <laughs> um, age. Here is exposed. below child laws on this podcast yeah, right I think now. You're not allowed. To, <laughs> a lot of things, you know, but it's all gray. You know what you do with your ma is it's all gray. So she 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 she, she would have us work, but we loved it. We loved it. And, we used to take like great pleasure in sharing one seat at the front of the clinic and people would come in and be like, Dr. Sethi, is he in? And we'd be like, she, like, we loved saying that because everybody assumed that Dr. Sethi was a man, but Dr. Sethi was our mom. And we used to love telling people that over and over again. And so I, from a very early age, very interested in medicine, I wanted to be my mother and so did my brother. And then, uh, I had a parallel interest in writing. And when that became more and more prominent, my mom definitely encouraged me to stay in medical school, which I'm, and to stay in residency in general, which I'm very grateful for. Uh, how do you explain that? In the end, I would never have become a writer if oh. I wasn't a doctor. The only way I got into wow. Hollywood is w- because I was a medical consultant. And the, like, there's no way to enter this industry. It's completely bananas. Like, I getting a door to open is requires <laughs> like a, a degree of self will and determination that your mom has, but very few people no. have. <laughs> but the but it's otherwise impenetrable. But because I was a doctor, yeah. I had a claim to authority. So I worked on medical shows, three medical shows in a row, before I began writing my own thing. But if I didn't have that expertise. Nobody would have done known what to do with it, you know, this random Indian from Boston in 2014. It wasn't like, you know, we were batting down the doors of writers' rooms back then. So, wow. in a way, they're all related things. But, but yeah, I definitely have some uh, encouragement from my mom to remain in medicine, which I have uh, learned to be very grateful for. That sounds so politically correct. Mm-hmm. Encouragement. Like, tell us how you really feel. <laughs> Save these children. Be honest. Was, you know, at at at, at times, I think that. Uh, I, I marvel at white kids whose moms and dads were like, you know, look around, see what you like. I remember when we got into Yale, all these people were doing college visits to see if they liked the college, like if yeah. the vibe was right or whatever. And my mom was like, "We, you will go to the college that has the highest ranking on the U.S. News and World yeah. Report. Like no yes. trip required, yes. no vibe check. Yeah. Like we, we yeah. weren't doing that. Yeah. So we, it was definitely a different environment, but I think my mom spoke the truth. And I, I don't yeah. think the white people did. I think they actually had the same thoughts. And I remember there was people in our class who were choosing between colleges. And it was so clear they were just going to go to the best one. But they drew right. it out into this long, prolonged decision that yeah. was, like, related to their personalities. And it's like, you go there for, like, 24 hours. You're just getting a random sampling that's statistically meaningless. I mean, you're ultimately going to go to the place that you think will assure you the yeah. best future. And why not? So my mom was uh, what I think white people would consider crass in her honesty about all of that. But it's infected me because now I have a similar degree of bluntness. But yeah, there's a lot no, of pressure, a lot true. of intensity. And now no, here I am. mom is our hero. Yeah, <laughs> we do hero. not consider her class. We're learning from her. My son, Veer, and Veer was actually specifically trying to find out if you are still practicing medicine because I was telling him. I am. Him yeah, I'm, I'm about to head there in two weeks. It. Yeah, I work for nine weeks of the year, so I still practice, and I do uh, end of life care. I, I'm basically on twenty four seven call. For nine weeks of the year. Wow. Yeah. Wow. It's really intense. <laughs> but Roshan, can I go back to something you mentioned about uh, the, the business? Yes, how did that happen? Karen? I'm so curious. That it's so how hard did to you get just into. But out then, of USC. Here you are with Karan, who is like broken every mold and like just yeah. from the outside feels like he auditioned for one role, he got it, and then things have never, it has never looked back. <laughs> no, I mean, you'll hear Karan's <laughs> story, but. No. <laughs> Such a hot, and, and an Indian guy from Delhi. He did. Yeah, mm-hmm. and he's a fob. Yeah, he's from India. Like, <laughs> yeah, he's a fob. Oh my god! <laughs> this is why Karan and I actually are like connected a little bit because oh, it's yeah. a similar. We came on like, the same boat. Well, from, you know, you took the boat. Yeah. From Bombay, so I the boat. There's no ocean near Delhi, so I went to Bombay. I got on the boat there, and then you know it was a long journey. Here we are. <laughs> Um, but how how out of USC you became the guy who like literally made so many doors have opened for you? It, um, it's I, I, I know well, so many people you're not still gonna like auditioning. These, you're not gonna like these answers because I started working in college because I was like this college thing is a joke for entertainment. Yeah. <laughs> so I got an agent before my junior year of college by sending out my headshot. This was in 2009. Oh my God. I bought clear envelopes and I, some student took my headshot and I mailed it to every agency in LA. It was like a hundred something agencies at that point. 
and you use a clear envelope because most agency mail rooms know that <laughs> it's a headshot that can feel the package and they just throw it in the trash. But if it's a clear one, <laughs> at least someone had given me this advice. They were like, at least they'll see your face. Because it's not like the resume has anything on it that matters. So you, but that's you know, so just, crazy because like, it's like you, you like just hope face? your image is so arresting that it like goes through the transparent <laughs> envelope. And people are like, wait a minute, who is this? <laughs> who is this? <laughs> Um, so not surprisingly, everyone said no. I didn't get any calls except three places, and the first two were scams. Uh, the first guy called oh, me no. in, and he told me that he just called me in for a meeting and then said to my face that I would never make it and that I should try to do something else, <laughs> but just off my face. Um, no. And then the second one had said the second one was a husband and wife, and they basically were like, "Please do like a monologue or something." So I did that. And then they were like, well, we really like you. Like, here's the paperwork, like, to get started. And it was, like, bank account number, routing number, all this stuff. And I was <gasps> like, oh, this is not good because you're not supposed to pay someone to represent you. And then they basically wanted to just scam me for some money. Um, so that was, like, a And then the third one was an agent who did agree to start signing me for commercials and stuff like that. And um, he said the only reason he was agreeing to sign me was Slumdog Millionaire had just come out that summer. And he was like, I oh like that movie. Oh, my God. <laughs> I was like, oh. <laughs> and then it Wait, was just hundreds that? of auditions, hundreds of auditions, and still are many, many auditions. And just kind of chugging along. But I got my first two jobs probably, in college. He was probably taking a chance that if there was a sequel... Yes. He you for, right? Mm-hmm. Yes, 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 yes. Exactly. Yeah. Well, Slum on that billionaire. note. <laughs> the billionaire. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I'm really curious, like, on that note, do you find that, like, when you were first trying to break into the industry, especially both of you, because you're both in the entertainment space, like, do you find that your, like, white counterparts had an easier time getting their foot in the door? Or do you find that people who had connections had an easier time? Because, of course, my mom is always giving us her insight, and it's always this, like, dramatized Bollywood-esque movie where she's like, I was, like, I came in, and, like, I just... Uh, and, like, of course she actually did that. Of course she actually yeah. did that. But I would love to know, like, what it looked like for the two of you. I mean, it was a lot yeah. like Zarna. It was, like, what what is probably feels, like, dramatic is, like, a grounded drama. Like, it was really, it was, ba- it's really bad. It still is, yeah. and it was really bad back then. Kern will tell you about how he was just exclusively playing terrorists for many years. Because there was nothing. And they didn't, they weren't really interested in, like, uh, Indian voices at that time in the industry. And it's changed now. But, uh, mm-hmm. But yeah, I mean, Hollywood at the time was mainly dominated by white executives um, who make a lot of the decisions about both casting and writing and what movies get made and what stories get told. But also by uh, a lot of Nepo babies who were the children of prominent people in the industry working both on on both sides of the camera. And like Like, any family business, my mom is a doctor and I'm a doctor. We are a family of all doctors. We are Nepo babies of medicine. But um, (laughs) so it's natural that in any industry, the children will, will, will be interested and inclined to pursue what their parents did. But it created, it's especially dangerous in Hollywood because Hollywood is so responsible for so much of how we perceive the world, of what happens in politics, how we feel, what we know, what we don't know. So it's it's a very dangerous place for the pool to become as rancid as it was when I first started. But I have a more extreme view of things, I'm sure, than Karin. <laughs> no, yeah, it's, it's true. The only the hard thing was, at least for me, was that I started in 2009. Um, there just weren't, like, bigger parts. So you could get, like, the small parts, like five lines or whatever. But then you can't really make a career off of that. So you're always stuck at this level where they're like, you can do this part, like you walk into an office and say one line or something, and they'd be like, we'd love to have a person of color do that, but not be the lead or whatever, right. which is the big thing that's mm-hmm. really changed now. Like the last show I was on, we had two Indian uh, main characters and we weren't siblings or related or anything. And then also the movie we got to make with your mom would not have existed mm-hmm. like 10 years ago. Um, that we got mm-hmm. Well, th- this is the perfect segue to talk about the movie, to talk about you guys, the relationship. So much I learned on the movie. So mm-hmm. for our viewers and listeners, Karan, Roshan and I filmed a movie, beautiful, exquisite movie, A Nice Indian Boy, which is basically the Indian, my big fat Greek wedding. And I cannot wait for it to come out. It is going to be hilarious. It is going to change 
people's perceptions of of how they view the gay community and you guys are a power couple in my eyes in my eyes you're a power couple also because he's a doctor roshan a oh. gay power couple so, so yeah that helps Karin, you're, okay. you're okay too Karin. you're really okay thank you thank you thank you yeah. okay Karin already flexed and you know fine yeah. he makes the money but somebody here is saving lives so like let's not get crazy yeah, let's not get crazy yeah Yeah, yeah, like everybody can make money. Okay, how many people can yeah. like cut people up and stitch them up? It's like the <laughs> whole thing. Uh, I yeah. think that's what doctors do. Yeah, he's cutting them <laughs> up and stitching them up. Okay. And stitching them up, like in that order. <laughs> yeah. Um, can we just take But, a moment to thank you for doing the movie? And you are incredible mm-hmm. in the movie. Yeah. You're, Zarna, you you're so, so, so proud. It's, I it's, can't wait for your family you know, to yeah. see it. You guys must be so excited. I can't wait to see it. Yeah. 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 Well, it it's done, or it will be done in the next few weeks, and then we'll submit it to festivals, and then it'll come out at whatever festival takes us. So we don't know yet. Is the short answer to that question? But I want to show it to you guys before it even comes out. Where when we come to New York, we'll probably show it to you guys. Oh, we're so excited! Yeah. Well, you guys should you guys should know that in the movie, I'm disappointed with my kids a lot, and that feeling came very naturally. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I had a lifetime of training with my own kids, right. so like it was a very naturally like a role that lent itself to my real life. No, that's and, really helpful. Yeah. And yeah. including being disappointed with my husband a lot. Mm-hmm. <laughs> my husband mm-hmm. in the movie. That's yeah. my role. That's so I was like, I got this. I got this. And, and not to mention, this. you do you dance in the movie. You do a choreograph. Yes, mm-hmm. which you guys are no ready way. for that. <laughs> Can yeah. I give you guys a little behind the scenes of Zarna at workout classes and dance classes? Yeah. So, oh, and yeah. every, no, this is super valuable, okay? So every workout class, yoga class, dance class I've ever done with this woman, she will put her own headphones on in the back of the room and start doing whatever she wants, uh-huh. right? So uh-huh. we'll be in like a yoga class doing like Warrior Two, and she'll be doing like Zumba <laughs> in the back to Bollywood. Yeah. And everybody's just looking at us like, what is going on here? So the idea that she actually learned a choreographed mm-hmm. dance is wild. Yeah, oh, she learned it. She performed it over and over again. They, because they picked the best song. That's why. This yeah. was a good song. All these, you know, all these American workout classes. The songs are so bad, so horrible. Who wants to hear that after paying the money? So I put my own, and I get thrown out of classes all the time. Yeah, because I don't want to listen to their dumb like, oh, diamonds in the sky, diamonds in the sky, over and over. Diamonds are dropping from the sky. This is not even real life. <laughs> So instead, you did Jalebi Baby, and what did you make of the sort of sexual subtext of Jalebi Baby? I I don't understand any sexual subtext. Oh I don't. God. Okay, to yeah. me, it is only about actual Jalebis. I don't know what you're talking about, Roshan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, I'm just talking yeah. lines. I just want to eat it, baby. Let me eat it. But I agree. That's probably oh, about Jalebis. Oh yeah. To, to an Indian mom, it is yeah. about the Jalebis. <laughs> yeah. mm-hmm. She wasn't even questioning the sexual subtext until you brought it up. She didn't even know that existed in Jalebi Baby. <laughs> My mom. Favorite song is a favorite English song is Candy Shop by Fifty Cent. And oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god. Oh my god. The lollipop, and I'm like, what do you think this song is about? But you know, I've not broken her bubble yet. <laughs> we we wow. don't know. We yeah. don't know what this yeah. song is no. about, yeah. and we don't want to know. We I mean, like, wanna, hello, yeah. I. You saw the relationship I had with my husband in the movie. Like, we're not trying to find out. You're It's not trying good. to find out. No. <laughs> well, shout out to Tesher for giving us that song for very cheap and letting us use it in the movie. That was great, and he. Um, I remember I read an interview with him once where he was asked, "What does Jalebi refer to?" And he just said, "What do you think?" So. <laughs> So <laughs> <laughs> really helpful. And, yeah. and are we allowed to talk about the other song that we have in the movie? If we're not yeah. allowed, we won't talk about. What is the other song? Yeah. Which one? Hello, Tujhe dekha to. Oh, oh, yeah. 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 oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot. I forgot. I forgot. I was like, what are they talking? Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, there's um the, the movie is like a tribute to DDLJ. It, to the oh Bali, the no way! Drink. So uh, the the spine of the movie is that movie, um, and uh, the two leads, Jonathan Groff and Karen, have a very specific relationship to that movie and to that song, Bajideka. 
and at oh. different points, each of them sings it, um, which is oh my a, God. a, a it cool is, thing. Yeah. It is the best thing in the movie to watch these guys sing that song. Mm. And I think with that one move, you guys are going to open up so many people in India to get in you. The music brings people in. This is a song that is familiar to like millions and millions of people. Our whole generation grew up on it, mine and my husband. My husband, not so much because there's no romance there. But me, <laughs> for sure. And, yeah. And, well, you know, and, um, and I, can you not throw me under the bus, please? Okay, shut up. After every episode where you like, oh, my mom, you remember your mom spontaneously. It's coming for you. <laughs> Sorry, Roshan, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, Aditya Chopra gave us permission to use footage from DDLJ in the movie. Um, which was uh, yeah. not an easy thing to get. And it's it's not actually been used in many movies because you literally needed permission from him. He's the director right. of DLJ. So, um, and he was very aware of the content matter of the script. And we wrote an impassioned letter and he gave permission like literally right away. So it... Uh, That's wonderful. It was a huge thing of him to do, do because you? he's taking an Indian classic and giving it to this very specific mm-hmm. context, which some would perceive as controversial. Mm-hmm. And he did it without flinching. Sort of like your mom. <laughs> um, because by lending your platform oh, I, to a movie like this, you're doing good. Yes. L- listen, this is why we're doing this episode today. Because yeah. we, we want to talk about being gay and being Indian. And no better than you guys to talk about it. Our community is so lagging behind. It's embarrassing. It is embarrassing how stupid some people in our community can be, but but in a spirit of trying to educate them and move this along so everybody can live freely and with a lot of love, and, and people can be gay and doctor and movie director and all of it together. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, that, that was just meant to be a joke before somebody gets upset with me. Um, no, we really want to learn. <laughs> like in our community, if you talk about being gay, like for kids, I think the first thing parents today would say, we think this child will have a very hard life. Therefore, we don't want them to be gay. Yeah. What, what would you say to that? I mean, well, it's not, I think life is hard. Um, if you're gay, I think it's getting easier. I don't know if it's getting easier in India where it was illegal to be gay until 2018 and is now legal, but gay marriage is still illegal. But it is uh, definitely getting better, but it is certainly not an easier life. I think it's sometimes easy to forget that that's the case because in the coastal elite cities and worlds that we move in, it definitely does not feel like that. And in fact, being gay has become somewhat fashionable, as crazy as that sounds to say. (laughs) But in the majority of the world, that is not the case. Um, And particularly in the Indian community, which I think has not been an easy place for either of us in uh, many respects. Yeah, I think when parents or whoever says when you come out that, you know, it's going to be hard for you, I think there's two versions of that. One is uh, a sweeter version, which is I understand more, which is that you're worried about your child. And the fear Mm -hmm. reaction is to say that first. And that's how my parents reacted. And then very quickly, they were able to be like, calm that fear and be like, okay, I can understand it better. And I think that's great. Uh, The other reaction, which I think is specifically an Indian South Asian thing, is people are worried what other people will think. And they're yeah. using mm-hmm. those words to be like, I'm scared for you because of what other people will think. And I think that is a horrible way to operate, mm-hmm. whether you're gay, straight, whatever it is. So mm-hmm. I think that's the scary one to look out for and know where's the that coming from, the sentiment. Mm-hmm. How did the two of you meet? Met on uh, a dating app called Raya. Called Raya. <laughs> oh, oh, no way. Raya. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, shout out. Um, I had been on it for a year and a half and met a lot of narcissist alcoholics. Uh, shout out to Raya again. <laughs> and um, <laughs> Roshan had only uh, really been on one or two dates, and then that was yeah. it. He got lucky where he didn't have to go through the whole thing. But. Well, yeah. he, he got lucky he met you. Hello. Yeah. So jackpot. Jackpot. Yeah. Even though he's a, you know. Yeah. No, I mean, uh, it's such a good guy. You guys together are so inspiring. We, uh, you know, we spent almost a month together in Canada. Mm-hmm. And every day I would go home, I would be like, if there was a poster child <laughs> for like how this couple should be or how gay people should be, this is them. They need to educate uh, all of us. 
lead the way so we can learn and you know because you're so optimistic you look at the beautiful art you've created the movie that you've created is going to change the lives of millions of people i'm sure of it um and can i can i ask a question mom did you yeah. guys feel like you were drawing on your own personal experiences roshan when you were writing and directing the movie and karan when you were acting in it because i know that you guys said there was a scene where you sing to each other, where karan sings to his co-lead like did you feel like that was a moment for you that was drawing on personal experience or how do yeah, you well, feel like it the, all played in together yeah i mean the movie is so stuffed with our personal experiences i did not write it uh, eric randall uh, wrote the screenplay which was adapted from a play by madhuri shaker that's been around since 2012 since before gay marriage was legal actually. i heard about that yeah yeah and it's an amazing play and uh, and the best parts of the movie in many ways are 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 kind of unaltered parts of the play Um, but Karen and I did rewrite the script with our own experiences as well, not to a huge extent and never to an extent that would deserve credit, but it, we definitely made it our story as well. And not the specific story of our partnership, but more what it, what it has felt like for both of us growing up. It was really liberating. And I, Karen's therapist keeps saying like, what a crazy opportunity to like process everything you've been through. And manifest oh my God. a oh my God. beautiful Wait, future. We need to take a pause. We need to take a pause. Oh my God. We need to take a pause. Oh my God. My therapist loves this oh movie. We need to take a pause. Yeah. Karen does therapy. Let's go. And he said it on the podcast. $250 an hour, baby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Do you find it hard to keep up with Roshan's intellectual quotient, given how educated <laughs> he is? Oh, Karen no. went to USC. No, I don't. Karen I don't is really smart. <laughs> no, it's a really it's a valid question. See. No, I don't because a lot of it is actually BS. <laughs> and <laughs> and, <laughs> and <laughs> I know, I, I know it yeah. because I can sense when he's yeah. making it up. And what he's very good yeah. at is, you know, he presents very smart. And a lot of times, uh, in early on, you know, when we were first dating, I was like, oh, my God. Like, I don't know a lot of these things. <laughs> and then the whole time, I was like, wait, that's not adding up with that and, and that and this. Right. And then I was like, wait, 50% of this yeah. is just him. He sounds very smart. So I can keep up just for and I can Kurt catch is as smart he as me. Lying. And the way in which we show our intelligence is actually, he is very USC and I'm very Harvard Yale. Like I'm full of pretension and pseudo intellectualism and phrases that sound very good. And Karan is just like a street smart, canny Indian. He's just like, he gets it. And he knows. But we have equal intelligence in very different ways of manifesting it. And my uh, very um, pretentious way of manifesting it, I owe entirely to my education. <laughs> Who, so. Who's right in the arguments more often between the two of you? Curtin's Who wins the most right. arguments? We don't really oh. argue. We don't really don't argue like no. that because when we, um, when we have a misunderstanding, each of us takes turns expressing how we feel and reflecting how the other person feels. Um, oh, and that just like that therapist told to us it. too. So, yeah. Yeah, so mom and dad, did you see, did you see how, do you see, so when my parents argue, they just don't talk to each other and I'm like, what's going on here? I think that's the way most people argue. I mean, Kern and I, um, have developed the system. It's not like we were just born with it, but it's, uh, mm -hmm. I'll, I'll say I'm feeling this and he'll say, I understand what you're feeling. And then he'll say, I'm feeling yeah. And if it ever gets really bad, I'll be like, I paid for this roof that you're living under. So. Mom, mom. Who wins more arguments between you and dad? Mm. Oh, there's never a winner. They just don't talk to each other. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> there's no like. Wait, mm. you don't know that. We, you I've don't know seen that. it. What do you mean I don't know that? <laughs> we, we may have declared winner between the two of us. You don't know mm. that. And, and uh, what is there to declare? You know 90% is wrong. Yeah. 90% yeah. times he's wrong. I will What say this and when when your husband visited Vancouver and we we didn't get to hang out with him but from when I saw you before he was there and after he had left and you were glowing and you were very no. happy. Oh, you were very happy oh, when he was there. Oh, 
glow. Yeah. 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 Y
Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my God, too. It's a, it's. I just heard about it today as we were preparing for this episode. My husband brought it up because, you know, he has, has to, to do something, something to yeah. like help me with it. And this was his his big research. Um, <laughs> but Karan, how was it for you? How was it yeah, for you coming out? Different. Was it like? Yeah. I I knew when I was fourteen, and um, then I came to so that was in Delhi, and then I came to USC when I was eighteen in LA. I had never been to LA before. Um, we had only ever visited New York and Vegas as a family um, from <laughs> yeah. India, and so that sounds about right. Uh huh. And so I came to LA, and then like first week of school, I remember distinctly again. This is two thousand seven. Seeing a lesbian couple holding hands, and literally the thought that went through my hand was like, head was like who's going to start throwing the rocks first? Because I was like, this is not allowed. Like, <laughs> to start, like, bashing these women. And then nothing happened. And I creepily followed them around for a while. Because I'm like, this is not allowed. Like, please, like what's going to happen? And then when nothing happened, I was like, wait a minute. And that was, like, a big moment. Because, you know, growing up in India, I never saw a same-sex couple ever. You don't right. see it, even if it's there. So it was, like, such a shocking thing to see it normal. Um and then I kind of experimented telling people in college, which was in LA. So it was like a very safe place. And then I really, at the time, was meant to be an Indian Nepo baby. I was supposed to come back to India and run my dad's family business. He makes uh, mm. tractor parts for John Deere. And basically, I really went to college really for him because his dream was to go to college in America. And he was like, you're going to have this job. No one's going to teach you how to do this job in India. Like, you'll have to learn on the job. So, like, just go live for four years and then come back. And then all that sort of changed. So the, at the time, like, I was meant to go back to India and, like, live out there. So I didn't think I could ever openly be like this. So I was like, I'll just have these four years and then, like, I'll figure the rest out. And then that December, I went back my end of my freshman year, first semester, to go back for Christmas break. And I'm very, very, very close to my mom. And I was just, like, that was the hardest thing for me, like, mentally to be, like, how am I going to keep this lie from her? Like, I was, like, I can keep it from everyone else. Mm -hmm. And on the plane, the long plane rides to India, I kept being, like, kept repeating in my head, just don't say anything. You're going for 10 days. They don't need to know. Like, don't say anything. <laughs> and then it was so interesting. Like, the minute I saw her, she was, like, very affectionate, very loving. And she was, like, how's it been? Like, how's everything going? Blah, blah, blah. And I just blurted it out. <laughs> it was, like, pin drop silence. <laughs> and then she was, like, I'm going to go talk mm -hmm. to your father. And then they huddled in a room and went on Google and said I would get AIDS and it was bad. Google? And then it turned out to be like wait, a Wait, why did they go on Google? I mean, I don't know. Wait, what? <laughs> no, did no, they have to figure out the Indian community I don't know. stands? Like, they just, yeah, ask Jeeves. Um, no, they just didn't know anything about it. And like the top search was AIDS. So that was it. They were like, you're going to die. And then, oh my God. And they believed that like, California had like corrupted me and like all of yeah. the, like, oh, that's and, what my mom thinks too mm -hmm. yeah yeah and then it was like a very tumultuous 10 days where there was a moment they were helping me pay for college so that I was completely like they were thinking of making me not go back and it had turned into this whole disastrous thing and then actually therapists kind of saved the situation sorry to say it but um, they were considering mm -hmm. all sorts of options, including, and this is like not to put them under the bus because they're very sweet and loving, but there was a conversion doctor who was talked about, but like that was just the level of education at that time. Like people in India believe, I think they still do that, that can fix things. And so I was like, definitely don't want to do that. And then I just blurted out, like, let me go to a the therapist. And at the time that was considered like, you're cuckoo crazy if you're going to a the therapist. So they were like, okay, that's good. Yeah. yeah something is wrong, but you should go. <laughs> And, you know, a lot of the draw, I got a very, like, smart therapist in Delhi who basically was just like, nothing is wrong with you. After the first hour, she's like, I need to speak to your parents. I'm like, they're not going to come here. And then she was like, don't worry, I'll let them know I'm giving your diagnosis to them in person or whatever. And then she, like, snuck them in there that way and basically just therapized them for an hour. And we were, like, all mm. crying. <laughs> it was, like, this crazy thing. Um, and then, basically, she said to me just one thing at the end of the session, which I still think about, which is she was, like, you were 14 when you knew. It took you almost five years to say these words out loud. And she's, like, your parents have known you since you were a baby. And they've projected onto you all these hopes and dreams. And you have to at least give them the same number of years you gave yourself to try to wrestle with what it means. And so she was, like, give them four or five years and for those four or five years, they're allowed to ask questions that might be offensive and you can't get angry at them. You have to be really patient. And then she was like, at the end of that, 
five years, if they're still homophobic, then you can be like, I'm mad at you now. Because I've given you enough time. Mm-hmm. But she's like, you can at least give them a shot. And I had not, not really thought of it that way. Because when you're going through it yourself, you're finally feeling liberated to say it. And you're like, why can't everyone just get on board with this plan? And then yeah. it often mm-hmm. takes a while to be like, oh, this person's, this is day one for them. And it's like five years in for me. And so mm-hmm. that was like an interesting thing that came out. What but an now amazing my mom, they live story. in Georgia in like a small town. And she's like the queer ally lady. Because <laughs> there's a lot of Indian families there. And my mom will literally be like, to any other parents, like if their kid comes out in high school, she'll be like, let me take you for coffee and we'll talk about it. (laughs) And then there's like this, there's all crazy stories. There's like one kid in their community who's like in high school who like does, wears full makeup and he does his mom's makeup. And then my mom like took her out and she was like, you know, whenever he comes out and she's like, what do you mean comes out? And she's like in complete denial. And my mom will be like... (laughs) I think, like, this might be a conversation that's going to happen. Like, yeah, if son she is always has her eye like, out like, for who's gay. Yeah, she has yeah. her eye out. Oh, yeah, that's yeah, yeah. so sweet. Yeah, yeah. Well, shout out to Karan's mom also because she's such a fashionista. I follow her yeah. on Instagram. <laughs> Sonia Sarab, shout out to you. Such a fashionista. I love it. She's on trend. Like, fall trends, mm-hmm. winter trends. Like, <laughs> I, I have to, like, check her page to make sure I'm on it. And I appreciate yeah. so much that she learned from you and now is teaching our whole community. Mm-hmm. And shout out to therapy. <laughs> Zoya, you know, Karan would have gotten there without this expensive therapist. He would have gotten there. Okay? Yeah, the conversion doctor would have helped me and everything could have been fine, yeah. The conversion doctor! Yeah, the conversion doctor. Yeah. I don't yeah. think the conversion doctor would have helped. Current mom <laughs> like, and dad are so sweet and so full of love that in a way I do believe they would always have gotten there. And I think that's true of my mom as well. But um, yeah. but yeah, it's a really crazy, really crazy thing. And I hope it's not like that now, but I bet you it, it is in many places. Um, well, I think in India and in Indian communities, there's still a lot. I mean, we know famous people that are just stuck. Mm-hmm. They just cannot come up. I mean, just listening to you guys speak, I almost wonder, what if they just did it? What if they mm-hmm. just ripped the band-aid and said mm-hmm. to the world once? Mm-hmm. And we know, you know, there's so many famous Indian people who mm-hmm. I empathize with them because so many of them have created the most romantic movies yeah. of all times. They are responsible for romance, but they themselves are living such lonely lives. Yeah. yeah. No, I think that's the saddest you know, thing is, I don't know when repression became the Indian byword or like the centerpiece of our culture. Like in a country where most people get arranged marriage, the number one thing is Bollywood, where people fall in love at first sight and live these florid escapist (laughs) lives. And that's very much a metaphor for the entire country. You never say the thing that you feel. But that's actually not Indian because we are all such great lovers. Like these wet dripping saris in these movies like we love. We're so <laughs> full of love. And the Zarna has a glow after Shalom visits. Like we, we really want to live. We really want to love. But we've like acquired this weird British cloak that, that has taught us something that is really not ours. When, when the truth, I believe, of Indian culture and our spirit and even us who have grown up in the diaspora is that we really believe in love, as silly and as non-doctorly as that sounds. Um, so I think we're going to find our way back there if we listen. If you just listen to the Indian songs, the lyrics, mm-hmm. right. somebody is writing these extremely <laughs> romantic, like... Extremely romantic. I mean, there's, I mean you, you almost can't put the two together. Like, you see the culture in real life, and then you listen to the music, mm-hmm. and you're like, is this the same people who are doing it? <laughs> Yeah, but in a country it, where only the men hold hands, not the men and the women. Right. <laughs> it's like, it makes no sense. It makes no sense. And like the nose kiss, can we talk about like the nose, <laughs> like the noses touch and it's like, oh my gosh, the moment is there. Like we, yeah. we captured it. Yeah. <laughs> but well, now they make men, out, which is crazy. Well, now they do. But mm-hmm. speaking of men holding hands, I remember when I visited my husband at his college, IIT, back in the day, like 20 whatever years ago, there were a lot of heterosexual men holding hands, like mm-hmm. even just as friends. Like yeah. that's a thing in India. Did yeah. you ever notice that? Oh, yeah. Now, I, in hindsight, I, I wonder, like, is your gaydar on all the time? Like, you, Do you see people, you're like, I wish he could just say it. 
<laughs> and none of those guys are Mine gay so when holding hands. And the reason they're holding yes. hands is because being gay is impossible. It's so impossible that they can hold mm-hmm. hands. So the, it, it means right. something no so completely think that they're perverse and ironic. Oh, because mm-hmm. you can't. Oh, how could you? Yeah. That makes how could sense. two men be holding hands with right, a romantic right, right. intention? It's so never, it's like so yeah, going through anyone's head. Yeah, but our yeah. gator, our, I okay, think, is do- on. Yeah. <laughs> Otherwise, hey, back Sarah, Sarah, did you just say it's so bad for you? Mine is so bad. The gator. It's so bad. Really? It's so bad. It's so bad. I didn't Have even you know Jonathan wanted was. Have to intervene? <laughs> Um, have I wanted to intervene? Like, oh, to get involved? Wait, you didn't know? Hold on. What? Wait, what? No, no, no. No, no, no. I did. But no, honestly, if I didn't... Him, John... No, if I had just met him, it would have taken me a few days. And I didn't know it was, like, Jonathan Roth from, like, Film TV Broadway. I would have been like, is this actor gay or straight? Like, was... I, I'm very bad. Yeah. I'm very, very bad at um, knowing. Yeah. I never want to yeah, interview because everybody's because acting, I so how just, can you really yeah. tell? I mean, like, I was mm-hmm. apparently convincing for two decades, and it's, but straight men are acting too. They're hiding all their softness because mm-hmm. they've been told they have to. So everybody's acting. Mm-hmm. Who knows, like, what it is to be gay or not to be gay. But, but obviously, you know, there's, we're going to be 10% of the population since the beginning of history until the end of time. So we're out there. So, Roshan, the two decades that you were not out, were you? did you go on dates with women? Like, was there, like, a... Yeah, a I did, without getting into too many details, I was definitely <laughs> uh, having romantic interactions with women. And But I was, I, was, I was really trying to, in all of those, convince myself that I would not have to come out if I could pull this off. Like, I, I felt that there was, if with the right amount of work and, like, Indian immigrant mentality, I could, like, figure this out. It was a solid Indian problem. Indian immigrant mentality. And uh, definitely not therapy, because we didn't want to go there. Didn't want to see what was down there. No, don't want to look down that well. Mm-hmm. Just uh, I developed two careers and pursue women and uh, never stop, was basically my philosophy until I was 30 and fell apart. So. Yeah, that's and why did you, you <laughs> did you eventually go to a therapist? Like, even though I'm I against this for and right they, now, you yeah, did. Yeah, and the therapist uh, uh, that Curran saw, I believe, saved his life in many ways. And the ther- therapist I saw, I think, saved my life too. And uh, they often serve that role, especially in a place like India, where repression is the byword. You know, their therapy yeah. is, I think, more and you know, than for two hundred and fifty dollars an hour to save your life is a pretty good deal, don't you think? <laughs> they're, Mom, they're like the doctors of your brain. Yeah, yeah, they're no, the. No, they're they doctors. are not doctors. First of all, Roshan, <laughs> please back me up here, okay? Like, please stop okay, the insanity. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. Who's more of a doctor, a chiropractor or a therapist? What do you think? No, oh my <laughs> God, <laughs> yeah, I had to go there. Didn't oh you? my God, you I know. See, even Roshan's like, I can't believe he said that. <laughs> no, no, but I do. Is, yeah. is what therapists have. That's what doctors need, is, which is the ability to compassionately and meaningfully engage with people. They do that, and we've stopped doing that a, a lot of the time. Yeah. yeah. Oh, the doctors have given up. I feel we like yeah. you're lucky if you actually see the doctor anymore. Mm-hmm. Right. You go in, it's like a split second, and then they're out, and they didn't even really hear what was happening. And my husband thinks he's a Google doctor because he's on WebMD. He's like, it's more. <laughs> right? Oh, don't do Shall that. Before, yes. Before every doctor appointment, do you not like do a deep dive on Google? Because he's like, I'm going to tell the doctor what, what mm. he needs to know. I, I, think, I think that being a doctor has become now a value-added job. Mm. For most of the regular stuff, internet hasn't. Mm-hmm. Now when you go to see a doctor, you need to have the doctor play personalized attention to things that internet doesn't have. Yeah. Uh, oh no, my God. I don't I think that's true at disagree all. Disagree with right. that more because most of what's <laughs> online is either doesn't apply to you or is just frankly inaccurate. So a lot of what you feel when you're online, you're like, yeah, putting things together, like living your beautiful mind, connecting little dots. It's just nonsense. You're not figuring anything out. You're just wasting your own time. Yeah. But I do think part of the reason we've been driven to the internet is because we've stopped being able to meaningfully engage with doctors. Because when you do see a doctor, they're like typing while they're asking you questions. You don't make eye contact anymore. It's such a it's a crazy thing. I completely understand why people are like surfing WebMD because it's like it's gone so bad. Yeah, Wait, Ashun part gives of all of his patients his personal cell phone number. <laughs> oh, that's so yeah. thoughtful. You do not. Him, do. Oh my god, oh my god. <laughs> I don't know where what's gonna happen after this podcast, but your phone, phone line, yeah, your phone line is gonna blow up. 
I, yeah, I, I can't remember. Confused. I have a doctor going back 20 years. I don't have his phone number yet. Oh, if she well, did, yeah. he would be getting calls from her every single day. <laughs> well, I am part time. I am part time. That's so I have fewer patients. My mom was like that though, as a doctor. We lived in we we lived in a different part of Calgary, and then she worked in the immigrant part of Calgary. And we'd go to the immigrant part because there was a really good mall there, and we walk around the mall. All these Indians, Punjabi aunties, they would come up to her. They loved her. And my mom felt so hard to me at times, but then seeing her with these patients, like they were all these like straight from the pin, like Indians who were like all, they, you know, she was their everything. That's the way medicine used to be. So. Wow. Well, let's move to a lighter part. Like I want to do a quick rapid fire, a few questions, your thoughts, like, mm-hmm. because we want to hear your perspective. I'm not, shut up. You can feel free to not participate, okay? okay. Because he always has to do controversial moves. So who's the best dressed person in Hollywood, according to you guys? Ooh. Um, Somebody that, like, stands tan up. France? Zarna Garg. No, mm. not Zarna Garg. The Tan France. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh. The tan is, I would say Zendaya. Zendaya is... Zendaya. Zendaya. Or Masari. Did you see her in Masari? Den- Den- she Washington. looked incredible. Mm-hmm. Yeah. She, she looks she's so good. good. Denzel Washington's a good answer, Dad. But yeah. Zoya, why are you like <laughs> Dan Friends wins this one, okay? Yeah. The, Denzel Washington, where did he get in the middle? <laughs> she the equalizer. I mean, seriously. The equalizer. Oh. You're the only person who saw the equalizer. <laughs> like, they you can't see the equalizer. One, two, and three. Yeah, yeah. three of them? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. There's a show. Oh too. my god. Yeah. There's a TV show about it too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But what it's not. Yeah. train that. The train that goes off the tracks or something no, like that's that. that's unstoppable, which he is just, also he, a Denzel movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He just dispenses, like, no. a hard form of justice. That's the equal. He's the equalizer. Yes. Yeah. It's a grown man film. Uh, yeah, oh, yeah. okay, grown man film. So There's no therapy grown man who's in the equalizer. <laughs> There's just Home Depot fights but with drills. Thinking... <laughs> Home Depot fights. <laughs> Wait, do you have a best dress in Hollywood? I no, I don't really like pay attention to what they're wearing in Hollywood rather than just watching the show. So I wouldn't. No, really but no have one an sticks answer. out to you. One of those Disney shows. Oh my God, that Prem Patel movie that you made, <laughs> Roshan. Oh, uh, that was the other movie for people who haven't watched it. What was the name of the movie? I just World's remember best. Prem Patel. Yeah, World's, World's best. best. <laughs> it's a math competition movie. We, you need to watch it so I can do yeah, a quiz with it on Disney audience. Plus. So. And what's your favorite TV show? What are you guys watching right now? Mm, um, movie, TV show. What are you binging on? Um, I, I just lo- finished. Ne- oh, okay. you, you can go. No, you please. You first. I'm more interested. Okay. Um, I just finished when we came back from Canada. A show never have I ever. Um, oh. Dee and I were talking about it, and yeah, I loved it a lot. I thought it was a really good show. Mindy Kaling's a new um, show for high school students uh, on Netflix. It like broke world records, and on the note of like demonstrating South Asian new perspectives, it like was pretty. It was pretty much a baller move, I have to say. Like I can't believe that mm-hmm. business wise, it did as well as it did because it features characters of all ethnicities of all sexual orientations in a high school context Mm -hmm. and it was like extremely I don't know it was extremely she pushed the boundaries in every regard and it still performed even better than like I don't know 90210 Mm -hmm. or like Mm -hmm. One Tree Mm -hmm. Hill these like same sappy high school Mm -hmm. tv shows that only featured white characters so and the fact Veer watched it completely separate of me like I didn't even tell him to watch it and that's Mm -hmm. the age group that they're targeting and he loved it and he kept asking me questions about the characters and what he thought and the love stories and the plot and like i don't know it was really cool so like there's definitely an avenue in entertainment for this now oh brown people hello we know right like look at the movie you we've made yeah yeah i don't think five years ago would have been an easy movie to pull off right how long have you guys been trying to make this movie A, a nice indian boy Almost three or four years now, but uh, yeah, a large credit is due. I mean, that's a six million dollar movie, or however much it is, and it, a large credit of, for that is due to the producers and the financiers, particularly Renee Witt, who because uh, these there's a sense now that diversity is becoming less fashionable and is fading slightly, but that she never wavered once in her commitment to the movie and in finding the money for it. 
which is the hardest part of this. You can believe in a movie. It means nothing. It's the money. Um, and she right. literally almost killed herself getting that money. Oh, my, <laughs> so, oh my God. I love Renee so we much. We love Renee. Yeah. yeah and there were many icon. other people involved. She's an icon. Yeah, she's an icon. Yeah, yeah. All of them. And I'm so glad Renee's sunglasses made it into our final song. And, you know, it's so I iconic. I'm going to bring up that story, Renee. We had prop sunglasses for your mom in this song that she, like, oh. stylishly takes off and throws into the audience at the wedding. And then she, you're, you went up to Renee and you were like, Renee, these are really cheap. And then Renee was like, here's my YSL sunglasses. <laughs> <laughs> very stylish. Wait. And she's like, do these work? Yeah. And you were like, this should work. <laughs> Wait, my thing. mom's a bit of a diva as well, though. And I wanted to ask, you guys got her a pair of pink Crocs? Was that yes. you guys? Yes. Oh, yes. Pink Crocs so oh, did, did yeah, they yeah. let you take, keep them? Yeah. yeah. Oh, they do. She wears them every day. Yeah. Oh, yeah, these are amazing. Yeah. It was amazing. I asked them, I said, can I keep these? And they were like, yes. And now everywhere I go, you know, I tell them, I'm like, these crops are from a movie. They're from a movie. We made a movie and the movie is coming. <laughs> and I make people like follow and tag all of you guys. Oh, and like, when God. it comes out, you got to like watch. Because... Listen, I think the moms getting on board, like coming back to our subject of this this idea of mm -hmm. opening things up for the gay community, I think getting the moms on board is crucial. Mm -hmm. I really believe that. Because the young ones have it, right? Like the, the kids, like Veer is like, why are we even talking about this? You know, it's yeah. a different world that he is in. Yeah. And the the men we've kind of given up on. Like Shalab <laughs> generation, you know, he he's gonna watch it. Shalab, would you right? Would you say your friends we should not try even? I agree with you. <laughs> <laughs> Poor guy. Oh my god, they're too busy oh with god. the equalizer. Yeah, yeah. we can't get them. The equalizer right. exactly. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. the women, I think the moms who are worried, who want to affect change, who thinking about their kids and how and their happiness and all of that. This is the sweet spot where we're going to effect change. So we're, the pink rocks have been great in that regard. Mm. But, you know, coming back to like, I, I, okay, before we let go, we go to the final segment of our podcast, I do want to say, if, do you guys have any suggestions for what we can do as a community to help the people who are trying to come out, who are repressed right now, but want to come out? What would you suggest we do as allies? As friends, mm -hmm. I, I think, can just think visibility. Of people in LA. Yeah, yeah, I think the solution is talking about it. It's the opposite of repression. It's current seeing two lesbians holding hands in the USC courtyard. That's all you can do, and uh, understanding that we're all uh, still standing after coming out and thriving in many ways because so much of our art has actually prospered because we're gay. It's been a gift in so many ways, not a curse or any of the things that our parents imagined for us. But I think the solution is just talking about it nonstop in casual ways that show that it's nothing evil because the only thing that makes things scary is not talking about them. And gay rights in a way reminds me of abortion because they're both things that have existed for the since the beginning of time and will exist till the end of time. But they both acquire more fear when they're not talked about, when they remain in the right. dark. But the agitating yes. over gay rights is silly. It's a waste of emotional energy. If you choose to spend your energy that way, that's very funny because we will continue to be 10% of the population until humanity dies out. But it uh, it will make the problem worse if we don't just openly talk about it because there's literally nothing to fear. Yeah. yeah. I think nothing that's, to fear. Yeah. I mean, the gay community is the nicest, warmest community. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And they're, and they're mean, very creative and very artistic. They're, res they're responsible for the biggest love stories in India. <laughs> Are authored yeah. by a gay man. Um, yeah, so, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. By many, aging really great. Many gay men. You know? so, yeah. yeah, yeah. Karan, yeah. you were saying something. I think I can't. Can you say that? Yeah, I think just off what Rashan said, which is so smart. I think that's why, not to keep bringing it up back, but why this movie, Nice and Evil, was so special for us to make, because really it's about celebrating gay love in a way that it hasn't been in a big, splashy Indian wedding. And like, Mm -hmm. I don't know how you felt, but when we both were filming those the wedding scenes and there were a hundred Indian extras and we were doing this traditional ceremony in full Indian outfits with two men, it was like this very visceral reaction. And we keep talking about it because we were like, we just don't see it. And we've seen right. it in the other way so many hundreds and thousands of times. And so I think there's such power in like 
celebrating that in an open way. I think it'll, people were emotional just from watching a fake wedding. So, but I think it's because it's, it's not, they haven't seen it. And so there's something mm-hmm. powerful in that. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, I was there. I remember everybody was like a little teary eyed Mm -hmm. because it felt like it felt like history was being created. Even, you know, Mm -hmm. this really pure uh, moment Mm -hmm. felt so much larger than what was happening in that room Mm -hmm. at that time. But but it it is, you know, I, I hope that everybody who's watching and listening is feeling inspired with your stories. And it's feeling like they too can, you know, if they just came out, tomorrow will be another day and they will live and then they will be on this free phase of their life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. But now, I mean, Roshan, definitely when you talked about it, you know, two decades, like it should not be that way now for anybody going forward. And I think that we can all learn from your example, not even just like, and just to throw it in there, like, I don't think that Indian kids or people should be afraid of anything. If you want to go into the entertainment industry, if you want to be a writer, (laughs) if you want to go be a comedian, if you want to do anything like that. And I think that like all this fear that surrounds like what's going to happen, like I think we can all do a lot to just mitigate that so that everybody can just live as they want to be and be happy. Yeah. But I know that's against everything that my mom stands for. So. I'm not going to, you know, first of all, Zoya, I let you join this podcast. You're a girl. Still, I said, still, I said yeah. we will give you a voice because we're going to be modern parents. And now this is yeah. what you do with the voice yeah. that has been my given. My therapist you. said to say it. <laughs> oh, by the way, her therapist, is this true? Her therapist will not let me find out what the two of them talk about. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's, that's pretty that's critical. Do you, do you not feel that. like I should get the notes? Well, from because them? she asks me for the notes and she's like, I want to know. She was like, how is it today? And yeah. I was like, oh, it was great. I feel really good. And she's like, what specifically did you talk about? And then asks me for like the play by play. And oh I'm just my like, God. Uh, that's, uh, that, I don't think yeah, that's that how would it works. Completely, that would completely undermine the safety of the experience that's required for it to be meaningful or effective. So you you can't know oh, anything. I think that if you're paying the bill, you should get to see the notes. I think Thank you. Can. Thank you, Karen. Yes. Oh my God. Thank no. you. I knew just write it. Some I just fake throw notes. me under the bus. Oh my God! Just write some fake notes. I'm gonna write. Like, I'm gonna write. I talked about yeah. getting an A in math. Yeah, yeah, I just yeah. met an Indian Praise male doctor. For Pray, oh yeah, my mom has made me so happy. In my yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. No, that's the way. Okay, now we're going to move on to a segment that is that we close all our podcast episodes with, and this segment. We don't care whether you're a guest or a family member or what. This is a very meritocratically based scoring system. It is called Good Grades with Gargs. And Mm. one person in this uh, podcast, each one of us can nominate who they think gets the A grade for today's performance in today's podcast. Okay. And our listeners and viewers are encouraged to chime in the con, uh, in the comments, in, uh, emails, in tags all over the place. Tell us who you think pulled the winning move in today's podcast, who stole your heart. And uh, we are going to go with good grades with guards. We're going to start with my husband, first of all, to see if he's paying attention. So, <laughs> shut up. I have, to, I have to give it to Karan. I mean, yeah. you know, I can only, I can't even sort of, it is just an incredible journey, especially because he is from Delhi. It's not like, you know, as much as the 20 years the Russian dealt with it, it was still in America, you know, and mm-hmm. for Karan to have dealt with it in Delhi, where it wasn't even legal and you know, I cannot give it to anyone else, but it is too much. It is just too complicated and complex a journey for mm-hmm. it to be given to anyone else. I, mean, I would give it to myself, given that. Well, I, how did you? <laughs> what? What just happened? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. okay. well, that's what? That's good. The what? rules. You, you know, yeah. I, I grew up in a small town. It was hard. It was a middle class life. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. I think your trauma is fine for right now. For I grew up in Delhi, so I know that if Karan and I were friends, and I know he's much younger than I am, but if he and I were friends, I would not accept him growing mm. up. Yeah. And no. that's a failing on me, not on him. Mm. And so I, I know how hard it must have been. I cannot give it mm. to anyone else. Like that. Yeah. 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 Ye
stars and your mom was stopping traffic outside the theater oh. everyone was like it's her <laughs> we were like, give us your phone we'll take her photo and that was um she was the star of the day for sure yeah <laughs> please don't downplay you are the indian spider-man there's gonna be god willing 15 more sequels prequels all of it because we need to hear more from you for that okay zoya who do you give a grade to Okay, well, I have two A grades. One, the right answer, because I can't give it first, but I want to give it to Roshan for being <laughs> a doctor and also mm. going into entertainment. As yeah. somebody who studies computer science and classics, I oh, am I always about that. following your passions, but also trying to appease my parents. So I'm out here trying to yeah. do a little bit of both. And so I really respect yeah, you that. Can. And I. And I, what's it called? I'm really hoping that doing both will like serve me one day and like, yeah. you know, in the, the same way that you were able to find an intersection. All the greatest minds did both science and art. Like the people you're yeah. studying in the classics of Da Vinci. So you're, you're just so enlarging I'm hoping. your prospects. But the second person I want to give the A grade to is Karin's therapist who went out there mm. and helped him mm. speak to his parents and mm -hmm. actually communicate how he was feeling and navigate what it was like to come out in Delhi. Um, and for all therapists out there who are able to do that for people, because that's actually God's work. I don't know about Hinduism, mm -hmm. but I know they're doing God's work. Yeah. Um, so... <laughs> Okay. All right, Joy. I know you were <laughs> trying to lobby for your therapist and more therapy yeah. budget. So I understand where the second A grade that doesn't that does not it does not matter comes from. It goes to Roshan for all good reasons. Okay, I will go next because I will let you guys close this out. So I think without a question, the A grade in my eyes goes to Karan because he's making the most money and then we need to Okay. Like in life, that is what it's all about. So mm -hmm. thank you, Karan, you know, and, and for making it happen in entertainment where I cannot figure out how to make a TikTok happen. <laughs> it is a miracle. It is a miracle what you have pulled off to come in from the outside, not connected, even though you have your mom's very stylish jeans, but, but still, very difficult, th this frontier that you've broken. I mean, as much respect as I have for Roshan, it is a very well-defined path, medicine. Like, yeah, you get the score, so get in, get the resident. No, it's, it's complicated in other ways. It's just entertainment is the wild west. Mm -hmm. It's like, you have no idea. You meet people, they all, and you know LA. Every meeting is a great meeting. What well, love you. And then it goes nowhere. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. It's true. Yeah. So for all that you've done and for all that you're doing, uh, you know, for our community in the arts and, you know, as a... It, as an ally in so many ways it's not even just being gay it's being an actor it's being a writer it's and it's being so sane despite all these big achievements you're like one of the most humble nice guys mm -hmm. that anybody can ever meet like you know mm -hmm. even roshan's got this whole ivy leagueness about him mm -hmm. like, <laughs> right, right you'd say right like roshan is I mean, it's not ivy leagueness he is ivy league yeah, yeah, yeah. okay my dad, oh, my dad likes that. Also, my mom hates that I go to, or doesn't hate, but she literally makes fun of the fact that I go to Stanford and think I'm an intellectual. So, like, yeah. I get the same hate. Yeah, I know. Eight years later, you're just obnoxious. And also, Stanford is not an Ivy League, to be sure. You know. oh. oh, okay. okay. Great. I mean, yes. theoretically, yes. it's not. I'm just saying. Yeah. Fair enough. It's shifting. Okay, up next, Karan Roshan, who wants to go next? You, who do you assign the A grade to? I have my winner. 
and yes, I had my cool. winner. It it happened to me. I didn't even know we were doing this, but halfway through, I had my winner. It's my king, my main man, Shalab. Because what? I just have to say, the iconicness yeah. of him on this podcast, there's like a printer fax machine in the back of it. <laughs> he's got like a, a headset with the king. I have not seen that in years. Yeah. Like he's a telemarketer. He's quiet for most of it. And then he's like, did you guys watch Denzel and the Equalizer? Like just the, he, I, I respect like a silent killer. You know, he's just like quietly yeah, yeah, sitting there. You're like, is he doing emails? And then he'll just come in with like some iconic line, and then he's like out. He's out of it, and like he's helping yeah, me yeah. with this computer in the chat. I mean, it is, it is beautiful. It is a beautiful, beautiful thing, yeah. and I must reward it. I must reward it. Oh and my then, god! Then, see, this is life's injustice. He yeah. just sits there with a freaking computer in the background <laughs> that I set up. Yeah. Not to mention. That yeah. I went and set up and no way, way. That, that painting in the back, that's a four dimensional cube. Shut up, you guys. Show them the four dimensional. Shut up, angle the camera because we can't see it. This, oh, he's very oh, proud of his four dimensional cube. It comes out of the thing? Yes. <laughs> it's supposed to be a four dimensional cube. That's the name of the company, Tesseract, <laughs> which means a four dimensional cube. Okay, but the I fourth mean, why dimension is time, I rest so my how case. is it? I rest my case no, and, like that. Well, is... you know, you have to Wikipedia it. <laughs> you have to Wikipedia it. <laughs> yeah, we all yeah, do know Roshan. how it. <laughs> yeah, Roshan, ask that question. Ask that question. <laughs> yeah. Because yeah. there's only Cause we the believe X, him. Y, Z. He said four-dimensional cube. Okay, fine. No, this right. is what Karin was saying. Karin was like, oh, Roshan will just say things. Like, we just say things. And then, like, this actual thing, I'm like, what? Like, I yeah. don't, yeah, that's so funny. Yeah, I'm pretty, I mean, we have to check. I'm pretty sure the fourth dimension is time and you can't show that. But, I mean, I, who knows? I, I, I have been wrong about so many things. <laughs> you wouldn't believe it. But, um, well, yeah. Roshan, so now we come down to you. Who do you give the A grade to in today's episode? Um, Karin, just because he's my number one. <laughs> oh, 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 oh my god. god. Yeah. It's very sweet. Karen, you can save us out for another week. Bit. If you keep that up, yeah, you can yeah. save us for another week. Oh. oh my god. We couldn't agree more. Karen, oh. you guys are so amazing. It has been yeah. so great having you guys. I really hope that this episode goes a long way and yeah. it opens eyes and hearts for so many people. And along with this episode, our movie, which I can't wait for it to come out, the preview, the festivals, you know it's going to kill at every festival. We already know yeah. that. Just because We're how so special it was when yeah. we made it. A nice Indian boy with Karan Soni in the lead, Jonathan Graff, Graff singing songs that you will not see coming. And Roshan directing the whole thing like a masterful. I mean, <laughs> you spoiled me. I told you guys. I said, you guys spoiled me for any other movie. Because no other movie is ever going to match up to this the warmth and the efficiency with which this movie got made. The beauty right. of it all. Thank you so much. Do you guys feel good about the episode? Yes, yes. thank it's you so for having us. It was, it was so, so nice much fun. And it was so great oh, to meet you. Oh, it was so family. nice to meet you guys. You guys are amazing. Like, this was the best. This was my favorite podcast that we've done so far. I'm going to be really honest. It was so wonderful to just get to hear your guys' story, too. Yeah. Yes. We and we will. Will... so much. <laughs> oh, love her so. She loves you guys. Yeah. She is literally like, I wish they were my sons, my kids. Like, you need to be like them. <laughs> yeah. Oh, of course. Oh, you know, I came back. Yeah. <laughs> 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 no, my son, that's why he wanted to know, are you still practicing medicine? Because I've been like, no, he didn't give it up. He didn't. He didn't. She's, yeah. been ta- she's been talking about you guys nonstop, like <laughs> oh literally nonstop. Well, it was and so she nice refers to you as <laughs> Indian Spider-Man. She's like, Indian Spider-Man and I are besties. <laughs> oh, it's true. Well, it's but, amazing but, to meet you guys. It's such great context. I love when you guys are in the special. It's so beautiful. And Veer is the funniest Aww. man on earth. Him giving that little countdown yeah, of his mean. power percentage is the funniest thing that has it's, ever happened. Iconic. Iconic. <laughs> and he just disappeared. <laughs> so funny. And, and, uh, th- th- this is the story of a live family podcast. Oh, like, yeah. it? Yeah. He he's like the president of the United States. He's busy. I, yeah. I'm glad it was a power percent and not just mom. I have another thing. I have to yeah, go. Yeah, I have yeah. to go. 
It was so funny. He was like, do you think that percentage will last? And then everyone was like, no. <laughs> he was like, 10, 9, 8, 7. It was so funny. <laughs> he is so funny. I love Veer. Yeah, no, and he, he takes his life and his position very seriously. You'll get to know him more with time. Yeah. But thank you so thank much. Thank you. 